So today I am going to be spending this hour just talking about logic and um, how you can use synths in logic and just generally how like you can use synths in a more interesting way. I think one of the things that people get a little bit shell-shocked by is like, you know, there's obviously loads of buttons, there's lots of controls and synths, there's lots of different like facets to them. You know, you can't really just like open a synth up and I guess you can just play, but like if you want to sound design properly, it's quite, you know, it's, there's, there's something to it. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm kind of do a little bit about like what synths are and how you can um, use them, but mainly it's going to be about like what synths are there in Logic, how can you use them in a, in a good way, and just some little tricks to kind of make them feel a little bit more like analog synths, which is really what everyone wants, I guess. So, um, so yeah, let's have a look at what um, what synths we've got going on here. So, our first um, like primary synth in Logic, I guess, is what's called Alchemy. Now, Alchemy is a piece of kit that was added about, I think, maybe three years ago into Logic. Um, and I think it was bought off another company because it's a pretty complete design. Um, but you can see here, if you open it up, um, you've got a massive range of sounds in here that you can draw on quite quickly. Um, if you hear anything in the background, I've got my little doggy who's walking around in the studio with me. Come on. Say hi to the folks on Garnish TV. So this is Mr. Bibbs, who's my dog. <laughs> he also loves sense. So go on, run away. Okay, so um, yeah, when you bring up the main menu on Alchemy like this, you've kind of got your main window, which has like your categories, your subcategories, and all this is doing, the, the browser, is just helping you narrow down like your sounds. So I think in here, you can see at the top right, there's three and a half thousand presets in Alchemy. So all the browser window is doing is just trying to help you like choose those in an easier way. So on the left hand side, you've got like, you know, your kind of core instruments. So like, let's just say I want to use like some pads and then you've got subcategories. So you can choose things like vocal, analog feel, that kind of stuff. I kind of find that I tend to use the two on the right. So either I know that I'm working in a certain genre, um, if you work in multiple genres like I do. Um, and okay, so in this case, I might want ambient, for example. Or I know that I kind of like roughly want something like so if I want something to add a bit of warmth into the sound, then I can go to warm. And what that does on the right hand side is it basically narrows down those three and a half thousand presets to in this case 228. So that's a really simple way of getting sounds up. Now, once we've just chosen the sounds, say I want like analog silk, right? It sounds pretty nice. I've chosen that. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Uh, where are we? Sounds pretty cool. It's kind of got a bit of a synth wave vibe to it. So, you know, straight out the bat, these sounds are pretty nice. Um, but what you can do now is you can use this bottom pane um, to then change that sound to something you want. Now, if you want to kind of use less space or you're working on multiple plugins at the same time, once you've found the thing that you want, you can go to simple at the top here and just see the bottom of the of the plugin. Now this allows you to just kind of focus on the sound itself rather than just like constantly staring into the abyss of of the browser. So um, let's just say we're working in simple. Now the first thing with this is that you've got a um, eight box on the left here, and each preset in Alchemy has eight presets kind of within the preset. So this one's called Analog Silk, but there's also like rich brassy, light brassy, thin bright, and they're all like sub presets of analog silk. So if I play, um, let's just, I'm gonna record like a really quick loop into uh, Logic. And then let's just have a listen if I start playing with those presets. Cool, so I'm trying to quantize that. Okay, so now I'm going to start moving between my um, presets. Different. Tinier, like sits higher in the frequency range. Still nice though. A lot more bite on this one, but much richer. Kind of sits more like a lead part. Got like a thinner version here. More of a sign feel.
So you can see with this, right, they're adding effects in now as well. You've got a tremolo being added there. I guess this one's probably going to be some kind of step filter. Yeah, you can feel it as like a, a kind of rhythmic tremolo effect. So you get like some really nice ideas going here, right, in terms of like how you can move the sound. One of the things that I think is best about this is that you can actually blend the presets as well. Because all the presets, if you look on the right hand side of this screen, are just like, you know, versions of, of settings on this. And in particular, using this, these X, Y axis, if I start moving this, you can just see the same, um, pre uh, sorry, same settings just move around. What you can do is you can drag between presets and that allows you to get a much more complex sound that's like really tailored to what you want. So let me just uh, start in Rich Brassy and let's just feel out like maybe a spot between these four that I like. So for me, that's getting like the low richness of the of the dark brassy part with the bite of the high one. So you've got like a lot of different sound going on there. So I've gone from this to this. So this is one of the best things about alchemy is that like you've kind of got this like endless possibility thing going on here because I guess if we go back to the browser window, you know, you had three and a half thousand presets. We've now gone down to 228. But really, you're kind of times in that by eight and then by the combinations of the four that you can get. So there's loads of stuff going on here um, that you know isn't obvious at, at first. <clears throat> so, yeah. So let's just um, look at some of the other things here. If Even if you do find a part that you like, what you can then do as well is you can start to um, like play with the actual presets themselves. So if you want more reverb, you can add more reverb in. If you want to increase your what's called your resonance, you can do that. We'll come back to resonance in a bit because we need to explain what that is. And you can just kind of like change the general um, parameters that you would um, on a normal synth, ADSR, cutoff, reverb, uh, cutoff, uh, resonance, that kind of stuff. I'll come on to that in a little bit because I appreciate if you've not really um, worked with synths a lot, a lot of that's going to be jargon. So <laughs> we'll come back to that. All right, cool. The other thing with, with uh, Alchemy is um, you can save your own settings. So if you go up to the top, you've got save and save as. If I wanted to save this, I could change that. Um, little known thing as well, you can also change the quality in Alchemy as well. So if you've got a real beast of a machine that like um, can handle it, you can put the quality in Ultra. And what they'll actually do is just bring up like the the um, the quality of the of the oscillators and the sounds that they're using. And if you're trying to like you know really get the most out of it and your machine can handle it, that's a nice little way of just pushing that up as well. Um, cool. So just to kind of look a little bit deeper into alchemy, um, we won't go. To, oh, accidentally set off. We won't go too much into this, but in the back end as well, if you see down here on the left, I've got perform, which is like the bit I was using to tailor my sound. I've got ARP, which is basically an arpeggiator, which I'm going to come back to in a minute. And we've got effects. So I can also start to root um, like different effects, like delay. I've got different things down here as well. So like your arpeggiator, which I'm going to come back to the logic one later, is basically a way of building arpeggios out of a chord that you play. So to give you an example of this, if you've not heard an arpeggiator before, I can choose a mode. In this case, I want the arpeggiator to go up. So rather than going like this um I'm just going to choose one that's a little bit less ringy so i'm going to just go to like key um we'll go to uh yeah keys for the minute and i'll just try something like this cool so that's what it sounds like normally but i'm playing c e g and c so if i go up then what's going to happen is my arpeggio is going to then play that arpeggio up this up the chord for me So you can hear it just da -da 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 just the whole time, right? Obviously, you've got different settings here, down, up, down. You can move it around. Up, down, for example, would go up and then down. So you can change that. I can also change how many octaves I want it to play over. So if I want to go like three octaves, it will go all the way up. So this kind of sounds a bit twee at the moment, just because it's like out the box. But you get the idea here. Like if you've got a part and you want to create like a layer or, or whatever it is and make some movement in that part. Like an arpeggio is a really great way of achieving that. So the arpeggio is back here as well. And then in your effects as well, you've got um, lots of different um, ways of building an effects rack here. So what you can see is that like, I've got three band EQ, fat compressor, 
which is just a logic thing for a um well, it's just it's just a logic term for a type of compressor that they've got built in as a plugin um, and then they've got this the reverb on the right so whatever i select here is then being put into a rack here that i can then start to work on so if i want to for example you know like um like take i don't know more low end out in the eq i can bring this down and it will thin out my sound equally i can go in and like do the amount of compression i want or i can go in and like change my my reverb so i appreciate if you're coming to this cold and it's a bit of a, a first time into synths like there's a lot going on here but if you are familiar with effects like building an effects rack in alchemy is another level of control that you've got over your sound design and ultimately it's just another thing for you to personalize which is great so um, yeah, if you are looking to add anything else, they've got lots of different effects in here as well, and you can just build more or less of what you want in. So um, so yeah, so we've gone from kind of simple level, which is browser, through to the actual simple view, which is like your perform view, where you can um, choose your sound. And now we're kind of getting like a little bit more advanced with like your effects. Now you'll notice there is an advanced setting on Alchemy as well. And what this will allow you to do is really get into like some kind of hardcore synthesis here. Now, at a beginner level, I'm not going to go too much into this, but the great thing about Alchemy, which which a lot of people don't know, is that you actually have multiple types of synthesizer in Alchemy. So on the one hand, you've got like regular subtractive additive, that kind of stuff, but you've also got like granular synthesis in there, which is something that I think a lot of people think you can't do in Logic. So um, I know Granulator and Ableton is obviously an amazing plugin. Um, if you are looking to do granular in Logic, this is the way you do it. So if you, for example, have a sample, Let's just take a, uh, like this, for example, my acoustic strum. I'm going to drag it straight over here, and you can see that it's giving me three different options in Alchemy. So I can make a sample out of the out of the sample that I've selected, the Apple Loop, or I can change it into an, uh, an Alchemy-based instrument. So if I drop it onto, onto oh, sorry, look, I was looking for granular there, but let me just unload that. So you can see here, it's added is an additive um, synth, which I won't go into now. But if I now add this in as granular, then what it does is it basically gives me up here a like a granular synth. So you can see up the top right here, I've got sampler, I've got granular. And I've also got the ability to change pitch form and all that stuff if you get into it. But now, for example, with this sound, I can start to break down like, um, you know, grains of that sound. I can change the position, I can change the speed. Let's try and get some... Uh... So if I was looking for like a loop there, like as more of a pad effect, I can start to draw that kind of thing in. So it's it's just another feature of Alchemy where you've got a lot of stuff um, that isn't obvious on the surface, but it's a great tool for making sounds and it's a great tool for really like kind of, particularly if, if you don't know what you're looking for and you're starting out with this kind of stuff, it's just lead with what you like, use the browser, get to something quite quickly and just like try and use it to like kickstart an idea. It's a really nice way of doing that. Yeah. <laughs>